Next, we discuss the identification of control direct effects. So here I have a more complicated DAG where I have, in addition to treatment T mediator M and outcome Y, I have pre-treatment confounders X. Okay. So this confounder is affecting T and M and Y. In addition, it also affects Z, which is the post-treatment compounders. So these are uh, the Zs are called the post-treatment compounders because it's affected by the treatment as well. Whereas X is pre-treatment compounder, so it's causally prior to the treatment. So the variable Z um, confounds the relationship uh, between the mediator and the outcome. So it's affecting both and then potentially affected by the treatment. Okay, what we want to do now is to think about the assumptions that are sufficient to identify the direct control direct effect of the treatment on the outcome, which is represented by the red arrow in the DAG. Okay, so what is the assumption that's necessary? The assumption is called the sequential unconfoundedness, and it has two conditional independence assumptions. The first assumption says conditional on the pre-treatment confounders X, the treatment is independent of the potential outcomes, Y of T and M, as well as the potential values of the mediator. So this assumption would be satisfied in the randomized experiment if the treatment is randomized. So this is a sort of standard treatment being unconfounded. The second assumption is the unconfoundedness of M, the mediator, given X and T and Z. So both conditioning on both the pre-treatment confounder and post-treatment confounder, Z, as well as the treatment assignment, T. Okay? And we assume that M is uh, independent, conditionally independent of the potential outcomes. So all these two assumptions basically is, um, imply that the absence of unmeasured confounding, both pre-treatment and post-treatment. In this case, one might think that we can just regress Y on T and M and X and Z, and then interpret the coefficient for the treatment variable T as the estimate of control direct effects. Unfortunately, that's not the case. This naive approach will suffer from something called the post-treatment bias. When you have the variable confounder that's potentially affected by the treatment, and this is very important, you cannot simply control for that, even though there's no unmeasured confounding, because that would induce the post-treatment bias. Okay, so you're controlling the Z, uh, you cannot simply just condition on Z. So in the expression given here, you might naively um, uh, compute the difference of conditional expectation function of the outcome when the t equals zero versus t equals one, holding everything else constant. In particular, m is con uh, holding at the fixed value m. That difference, and then averaging over the distribution of x and z, um, is not the same as the control direct effect. So this has a post-treatment bias. Instead, what you need to do is to model Z, the post-treatment confounder, given T and X, which affects the Z. Okay, so we actually have to do additional modeling of Z given T and X. Okay. So that's represented by P of Z given T and X. Once we model that, then we can compute the difference between when the T equals zero, uh, the difference of the conditional expectation of Y, when t equals zero versus t equals one, holding m constant as well as x constant, but the z is coming from the predicted z under treatment equal one or the treatment equal zero. Okay, so the identification formula suggests first predict z given t equal one and x, and then use that z and then plug into the conditional expectation function, regression function of y given t, m, x, and z. So that extra step is important because Z is affected by T. So we need to know when, it, you know, we need to know when the T uh, changes what value of Z 
and uh, might be likely to, to be realized. So for the con identification of control directed effects, it's not sufficient to um, simply just regress Y on T, M, N, X, and Z. You have to model Z given T and X. What about the identification of natural direct and indirect effects? So here I have a simpler um, DAG, which doesn't have post and confounders. In fact, it turns out that the identification of natural direct and indirect effects, even though the total effect decomposition is very, very appearing, requires the assumption of no post and confounder. So the question is, under the assumption of no post and confounder, what do you need uh, to estimate, uh, what do you need to assume in order to identify the in natural indirect effects, hence also natural direct effects. The red arrows represent the natural indirect effect. We have two conditional uh, independence assumptions like before, but the content of it is going to be a little bit different. The first one is actually identical. So conditional on the pre-treatment covariance x, the treatment is independent of uh, potential outcomes as well as potential values of the mediator. So this is again is satisfied if the treatment is randomized. What's different is the second assumption. In the second assumption, we are condi not conditioning on the post-treatment confounder z because we assumed no such post-treatment confounder exists, and we are assuming that mediator is independent of uh, potential outcomes conditional on the only pre-treatment confounders and the treatment. Okay. In other words, there is no Z, that there's no alternative uh, causal mechanism. The alternative causal mechanism is all represented by the direct effect. Okay. One thing to notice about this, I've written explicitly M of T so it's conditional on t, so m of t is equal to m, the observed m. However, this signifies there is a cross-world counterfactual independence assumption. That is, we are assuming the mediator that's realized under the treatment condition t is independent of the potential outcomes under the uh, treatment condition t prime. And t and t prime might be different. Right. So, in the world where t equal little t, we observe m of t. In the world uh, where the t equal t prime, we observe y of t prime comma m, and those have to be independent. This cross world um, counterfactuals uh, independence assumption is necessary because of the nature of natural direct and indirect effects. If you Remember the definition of natural indirect effect. We are contemplating holding the treatment constant at the little t, changing m of 0 to m of 1. So we are, and then what, how that would affect the outcome. Right? So we are imagining the value of the mediator that would be realized under different treatment condition. So in order to identify that, we need to assume cross world counterfactuals. And this is a controversial assumption for some people because uh, you never observe both things at the same time. So in a, in a sense, it's very difficult to verify this type of independence assumption um, as whole, or it can never be, be verified from the real, you know, the random, randomizing M is not going to be sufficient because those would be different counterfactuals. So the, unlike control direct effect, which is that, uh, quantity about the intervention, hence we can actually identify under randomized experiment, if we randomize both treatment and mediator, natural direct and indirect effects are not about the intervention, the effects of intervention, so randomizing the treatment and the mediator doesn't really identify this quantity. In fact, intervening the mediator misses the whole point of the natural direct and indirect effects, because we want to think about the counterfactual, what would happen to the outcome 
if the mediator would take the value, natural value, that would be the arise under different treatment conditions. So no interventions, no randomized experiment can really identify these effects. So that's why like some people who believe that um, randomized experiments are gold standards and for them it would be uncomfortable kind of interest because no randomized experiments can identify these effects. What about the identification formula? Um, since we don't have um, post human confounders, identification is much easier. In fact, we, all we can do is we can predict you, you model M given T and X, and then we can predict um, under each treatment condition what the M might be, and then plug that value of M into the regression function. Okay. So there's no additional step. You still have to model the mediator given the treatment X so that we can predict M of one and M of zero, but once you predict m of 1 and m of 0, we can plug that value into the, um, uh, into the uh, outcome regression expectation, condition expectation function.